I think this is going to be a Shivambu talk. So integrated versus disintegrated. That's sort of where I'm at right now. Yeah. It's like the urine, once it comes out of your body, becomes more and more highly integrated. And we know that from the ORP, from the oxidation reduction potential. So there's these like little meters. They use them in pool and septic and water treatment companies. It's called the ORP meter. And if you think about oxidation, you know oxidation's bad because you know antioxidants are good. So I don't have to review that. So reduction, reducing, right? Make less than. And then potential, which is potential, right? Like that's the gateway into the infinite, right? Right there. So we have urine that comes out of the body at around negative 50 ORP. Water's like zero, like water's in trouble if it's plus. If you're if you put your ORP into whatever water you're drinking and it's registering plus, that means it's adding oxidation to your body. It's like adding inflammation. So no bueno, no bueno there. So aged urine, <laughs> it's so crazy. It's so crazy. We need so much more research. This is what's driving me so freaking nuts about writing up cycling your pee. And I love it too, because it's like a treasure hunt and a mystery. I just wish I could do it full time because that's what it deserves. Yeah. All right, so negative uh, 400. There's no other substance, or so I've heard, but need to do more research on. There's no other substance that could be put into the human body that's that high of a negative ORP, because what happens is it burns. Like a higher than that, or not, sorry, higher than that, a different substance with that high negative ORP burns. So you can't put it in the body. Then you can't put urine in the body and it doesn't burn. It, it'll burn mucosal membranes. It'll sting, but I'm not sure how tied that is to what's in the pee and levels of inflammation. So again, like there's just massive data gaps everywhere one looks, unless you look at user experience, right? And so what's the difference there? Like in the lab of the body or in the lab of the scientist, right? Anal analyzing it from the outside or experiencing it from the inside. And on the inside, what we know is that it does two things. It reduces AMA, it dissolves AMA, and it builds OGIS. So easy. So simple to say that. Balances the doshas. Okay, that's handy. <laughs> I don't know about for you. <laughs> for me personally, that's handy. Balances the doshas. Uh, dissolves inflammation and how through, through nitric oxide. And that's where the conversation goes. It goes from things like ORP to pH to nitric oxide to oxidative stress uh, to inflammation to microbiome. And those are the reoccurring, those are the themes. Those are the themes of the book. Those are the chapters of the book because that's how it works. So when you ask a question, I mean, what I ask myself, or maybe what I'm starting to ask myself is why does it, if it were, if it, if it does work for everything, everything, just everything, Everything, not like a specific thing, but everything, including all the specific things. If urine works or makes all the things better, why, why, how, how, where, doing what, doing what? I mean, we have so much technology, right? Like what is Elon Musk doing this week? It's ridiculous. We have so much technology. <laughs> we don't understand urine. We don't understand urine as it ages or evolves, that's with the community. They change the word from aging to evolving because our culture doesn't understand aging as evolution. Dumb, I know, we're so not, it's like we're so smart and yet, if you think of like aged cheese, aged wine, right? It's evolving. So when you're in, if we see it as a culture, if we see it as a culture, that means it has its own microbiome. Now that's fascinating right there, right? Just pause and think about that. So when you're putting urine back into your body, how come it feeds the microbiome? Well, it's already assimilated. And then it's, this is what's, I mean, where I keep coming down to, and I think this is also why the urine conversation, eventually you end up talking about all these different amino acids. You know, the ones people are taking expensive supplements, like you go to your functional medicine doctor and you get these exact amino acids that you need to take so that your body can build better protein so your body can build better genes, essentially. Um, your epigenetic potential increases, right? That you don't lose your genetic intelligence, but you manufacture it better, right? So then what happens with urine is even though it looks like 
some of these bigger, more evolved cells might never be digested, right? Like your stomach acids would change them, right? They'd break them down. So it would go to disintegration. So again, integration, disintegration, it would break it down back into the building blocks, right? But then something's being absorbed. So subliminal, sublingually and through the skin and through the bottoms of the feet. What we know is absorbed kind of everywhere, as far as I can tell, and correct me if I'm wrong, please do show me the research. I would love to quote it, um, is amino acids, right? Like you just cannot not find an amino acid in urine. So now it's pre-assimilated to the body because of the blood plasma and then it's absorbed. So it's able to reintegrate. So it, go, it can go to disintegration. It can go into smaller parts or it can go into bigger, more complicated, more evolved parts. And that's where it really changes our whole perspective of the waste cycle. And it calls into question, you know, everything from a much deeper materialism, much more in tune with elements as they construct and as they deconstruct. And as that happens, you do start to feel, I would say it brings you like right into the yogic texts around, uh, or it brings me there anyway. <laughs> I knew all that philosophy study was good for something. It goes right back to the clashes, like the reasons people contract, like the reasons people go to safety rather than adventure, right? Go to safety rather than adventure. You don't want your life to go to safety over adventure because that's not really living. So like, then what's the point? Right? It's not about protecting yourself. It's about being grounded and going on the adventure. So the big, you know, the, I, I mean, the big Klesha, they say the big Klesha, the big Klesha's, or at least Desikachar says this. Krishnamacharya's son, Desikachar. Madras, Chennai, that area. He, he says, you know, it's really rooted in a vidya, which is failure of not wisdom, like vidya. By, you know, you've got, got your vidyas, you got your vidyas, you got your vedas, right? And it's all this alignment to like there's a higher plane of knowledge <laughs> like tune into that like tune into higher levels of frequencies higher levels of wisdom right because that exists at that plane you start to understand how the cosmos unfold so avidya is where you get off track right you don't you're not tapped into deep wisdom maybe you got busy right with the what's going on on the surface of life and forgot to like find the root so avidya one of the then the other clashes, again, these stains, these contractions against being on the real adventure of your life, right, is abhinavesha, which is fear of death. And fear of death ends up being fear of living, right? So people are just like afraid because they're so afraid to do something that they're not really living. So back to the theme of integration and disintegration in Shivamvu, what seems to happen is that it pushes that, that's a vata energy. That fear of living is a vata energy. It's, a, it's in the negative state, right? It's not, it's in, the, it's in the pathological state where it's no longer in support of the functionality of vata in the body of how things move, but it's creating a patterned way of movement. So it's not free. The person's then not free, they're afraid. So what the urine seems to do is it moves it out. And it moves, I mean, one of the faster ways to deal with like this, you know, we can just call it the abhinavesha issue, A-B-H-I-N-I-V-E-S-H-A, abhinavesha, yoga sutras of Patanjali, that's where we're at. Um, and I think we're in the second or third book. We're not, I don't think we're in the beginning there. So this is like yoga philosophy, yoga philosophy, yoga philosophy, and then like, okay, if you haven't dealt with these things, and that's the kleshas. Right, so if you haven't dealt, if you're not thinking about these things, then um, think about these things because otherwise the yoga won't really happen. Like your experience of yourself as the creator or as the cosmos in action or just totally connected or however you want to say it um, will be limited. So how does the urine do it? Well, we could look at it from a negative ORP level, and and this is where we could get creative if we wanted to. We could get creative. <laughs> We could get creative and start mixing systems, which is super dangerous, like academia, like, oh my gosh, I'm going to violate every law of academia. Oh, well. So if you look at it holistically, and the Eastern sciences are so much better than the Western sciences on understanding the whole, the whole system, right? Understanding the waste is part of the cycle. Waste is the disintegration that breaks the elements down so that you can, they can then rebuild and integrate. They can then come into a higher level of integrity and integration and form, a, and form a thing, whether that thing is a stem cell in urine 
or whether that thing is the breakdown and back into amino acids or even back down into check this out periodic table elements like carbon and hydrogen and oxygen and nitrogen right the bases of life right and just break it down into that level and then the body does what it wants with it so when you look at urine and i'll go back to the grounding and the fear of death and all that but when you look at urine uh, it's very heavily involved in the nitrogen cycle yeah like with the wet cycle like we know about the oxygen cycle and we know about the water cycle but like what's this whole nitrogen cycle and as far as i can tell is it's like really tied into the microbiome right so it's like you want a plant to grow you add nitrogen as a fertilizer if you want your plants at home to grow add some pee to water it's like a 20 to 1 ratio something like that but play with it like just intuitively play with it so notice what your plants like so nitrogen too much nitrogen then you have not enough oxygen you have a bog so this ability of nitrogen and oxygen to fuse in nitric oxide and release and how urine nourishes nitric oxide potential in the body nitric oxide potential is directly tied into how much oxygen your cells can absorb yeah so your blood oxygen levels and this is where it's like okay so what does that have to do with fear of death well first of all you're oxygenated <laughs> right <laughs> like that's gotta help i was reading this um no i was listening to a doctor talk about nitric oxide today that's kind of like what kate does for fun while working out uh <laughs> he was saying that like uh, you know like typical athletes so if you you know right now there's the olympics going on but there's always something going on there's always some pro sport where you see like you know the best of the best of of human bodies doing something that requires you know a shit ton of skill and practice and talent and and mindset and all that and you think like 20% more blood oxygen? <laughs> like that's a nice advantage. That's a nice advantage. To have over like everyone else in the competition. So anyways, how does it work? Well, it then goes back to microbiome. And this goes into like the integrity of self, which goes to abinavasha. If like all parts, if all cells were oxygenated and alive, would you be less afraid to do whatever you wanted to do in your life? Oh, gee, Kate, that was deep. Yeah, right? But it just happens naturally. It doesn't happen from like trying to make it decide to do it. That's what's so like just crazy pants about Shivambu is it works on you. So you don't have to do the work. It just works on you. Yeah. All right. So what happens with the Vata is that fear, that emotion will get pulled out. So if you did say someone's like, I really want to get over my fear of death, my fear of living, my of innovation, my klesha, right? I want to see what another level of feeling totally supported from the inside out to be able to just take action, just to take aligned action. Like I want to check out what that's like. That sounds interesting. It sounds like an interesting experience to have. If that's on the menu, like, yeah, sure. I'll go for that next. I'll leave the brownie Sunday aside. I'll choose that. Yeah, sure. Why not? So the enemas, aged urine enemas would then pull, this is what's weird, is like there's a definite physiological component because it's urine. So it's interacting with your biochemistry. It is your biochemistry and it's triggering your biochemistry to operate at, at a higher level, vidya, right? At up a level, right? You're going to jump a level. It pulls toxic air out. So the person might actually like fart a lot. They might have a lot of bowel movements. They might start to crave a feeling of uh, both fullness and emptiness in their colon. And so that they're back in the spawn to their back and the pulsation of like full and empty. And they notice that there's a scintillating energy. The yogis call that prana in the colon. Well, as this is happening, the microbiome there is getting healthier. So the whole human being is becoming more in line with its own genetic potential. I'm not going to explain that right now, but I will later because it's important. It's important to get. So now you have like microbiome pulsating in the intestines and in the colon, right? And as this happens, the person's more grounded and they're more able to move from a place of grounding. What happens to their oxidation rate? Well, their oxidative stress decreases, right? If, they're, if their pH is off, it becomes more balanced. Usually that's a move towards alkaline right now. Their blood oxygen level increases, their nitric oxide production level increases. They're just more invigorated. They're more full of the life energy, less full of that, which is the opposite. So what is the opposite? The opposite is living in a field that's oxidized. Wow. 
Oh. Right? Imagine like a clean, pristine, bubbling brook of water. And then imagine like a like the treated water that happens when you live in a desert and water has to go through all this treatment and it's, you know, it's treated with all sorts of things. Different elements, right? But it's different. It's a different vibration. So it's ORP is higher. It's less able to nourish the microbiome. So some of us are like living internally in a state that has a higher ORP, that has lower nitric oxygen oxide levels, has lower blood oxygen levels. And that's a state of chronic inflammation. And I've like listened to the last 25,000 podcasts I've done on that because I'm so tired of that conversation. But it's also the conversation that'll never go away because it's tied into this whole thing, right? So what I notice, because I'm giving this talk on emotional eating in September, I'm giving a Dharma talk on emotional eating in September. Why? Because people ask me to. <laughs> Like, that's why. <laughs> it's like, you should do that. And then I remember I was like, yeah, you should do that, Kate. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll talk about that. And it's, what it's so fascinating about, we're all emotional. Like, we're, it's an emotional body in, in Ayurveda. Like, a whole body is emotional. Another whole body is energy. Another body is, is bliss. Another whole body is the body. Another whole body is intuition, right? So, so then, like, what we eat, like, we're always eating life. Like when we really, really eat life, we really eat life, we are so full and fulfilled because we're in the flow of it. We're not making ourselves do things that are out of the flow, even though that might be hard, even though that might be countercultural. <laughs> you want to see my urine stash? Talk about, can I, let me see if I can show you. I think you can see it there. Yeah, that's like where I'm aging my urine. Yeah, I mean, it's a little, it gets a little countercultural. It gets a little weird. <laughs> Yeah, right? But if you're not afraid of truth, then you're not afraid to live, right? And then Abhinavesha, just, it, just, it just disintegrates. And that energy that was in it, because it's full of energy. I just spent a lot of time with someone that really had this, uh, a teenager, actually. Super surprising to me. Like, I haven't, um, I don't know, like, the typical person I hang out with is not really, like, afraid to live. And so it was interesting to spend time with an extended family member that was, like, you know, just like afraid of, of so many things that, and then I realized like, oh my gosh, we got to get, take your socks off. Like, let your feet breathe, right? What's feet breathing going to do? It's actually going to, it would actually raise her blood oxygen level, like even just slightly, but it allows for grounding. And the yogis are like, oh yeah, grounding, right? Root chakra, feet. Yeah, of course. Spread your toes, right? And the yoga teachers out there are like, oh my gosh, I cannot get certain people to take their socks off when walking into a yoga studio, especially as newcomers, right? Where people like really fight you at the door and you're like, no, you got to take your socks off. You want to be able to feel your toes and spread your toes and see, see your toesies and like notice your feet and like reincorporate them. Like don't cover them up. Uh, fear of taking off socks. What are other self-identifying things? Like fear of doing what you really want to do. So some of you need to leave a relationship or a job or start something new or do a, go, you know, invest in something that, invest in some training you've been thinking about for a long time and just held yourself back from because it's different than how you've done things in the past and different is scary right new new is scary it's different you don't know it's unpredictable high risk right all that if anyone identifies with any of that that's of innovation all right i'm gonna watch the clouds go by disintegrate and it reintegrates right oh my gosh it's been amazing we had water we had rain all the rain dances worked <laughs>